Well, we're out here today with the swordsman. What? Nice. We're out here today with the swordsman because I wanted to start clearing this over here. This is where I would like to put the fruit trees. Now I talked with the neighbor and he's, and he's been here, you know, four decades or so. And he says only once when he was a kid did the ice build up all the way to the edge of the road. The river is flowing towards me and of course this big spit of rocks here, I assume, is going to give me somewhat of a, a buffer, a barrier, so that the, the ice doesn't actually build up all the way to the road up here. So I'd like to stick my fruit trees in there. I don't want to cut any of the, the big pines. And this is the widest section. So I'd like to continue where I've already started and uh, cut it in there. So let's get on that. We've more than doubled the size. So I'm going to bring the death mower out in here. That's why I haven't bothered with the little stuff. All it does is yank the chain off. I'm going to continue pushing that way. Um, I want to maximize the morning sun because the sun kind of comes over the top of there. So I'm going to maximize my sun. I'm going to push out into that area because that's where I want the trees. I want the trees as far up the bank as possible. I don't think I'll plant anything in front of, there'll be nothing out that way. It'll all go along here, maybe in some rows. I was reading up on modern apple orchards and uh, training the trees to trellises, which seemed like a neat idea. So we might try to trellis them through here. But somewhere out in there is a barbed wire fence. I don't know, we have an old telephone pole stuck right there, but that then could be the edge of the old Highway 200. It's not the fence line. And then back down that way a ways is the culvert under the road. And that's how I'm going to get water down here. You know, my pump's right up on top up there. But uh, I'm going to gravity feed water down. And then that'll bring it to the orchard. But pizza's here. And we're tired. So I think that's going to be good enough for today. Apple a day, part two. Back out here. Uh, I've been here since 10:30, 11. Kids, they showed up about two. I got a, a bunch more cleared out in there, and then a lot cleared out over here. I have come to hate, and it's been raining. That's why I never set the camera up. But I've come to hate the hawthorns. God, they're horrible trees. It's, it's kind of like vine maple, right? So it wants to grab the saw chain and pull it off. So it's vine maple, except it's covered in these wicked, thorny spikes that just hook in everything, including yourself. I got the death mower out, putting her through her paces. I knock everything down, it's big, and then Try to cut the stumps off at ground level. Then we fire up the death mower and we have at it. And it's been doing a, a good job. So there's now a chunk missing off the blade. 
So. She might need some love. So the idea, I got fruit trees coming, okay? And the original idea was I put the orchard right up against this fence line. I figure that's probably near where the road right away is. Put the orchard, you know, right into here. But it's really dawned on me. There's actually a, a fair bit of land out in here. And what I was thinking is if I go right through that snaggly cottonwood, I can tie into the, the gate there, you put a road in, and you put a pad right here for uh, tents, bicycle camping, small RV. And I figured I'd put the orchard over in here, and then I've got room for at least another pad right where those cottonwood trees are, and then one more farther down. I don't know what the laws are about setting up a campground or insurance or whatnot, but hey, it might be a lot easier than running the tour truck. Get 40 bucks a night times three. If I was willing to put the orchard somewhere else, and I don't think I am. I mean, heck, they can camp in my orchard, right? Put the orchard down over in here, and then I could get three or four, five maybe out in here. I have so much brush and no place to put it. So I stacked on the far side and now I've stacked over here and I, I picked this because there's a bunch of dead cottonwood trees, massive trees down in there and I just, I just didn't want to mess with them. And then when we bring the backhoe down or the bulldozer, you know, I'll shove it and crush it and shove it and crush it and I can pile it all together and then, you know, let it burn or heck, just let it be, just let it be a hedge. What do I care? What do I care? Other than it interferes with the, the river views if you're going to have a campground. And where the kiddo's working, that was my trail to the road culvert, which I have dramatically underestimated how far it is. That hawthorn's tough stuff, huh, bud? So this is what I was cutting my way in. You know, and it was uh, years down the road, clear a little more land, a few more trees, a little more land, a few more trees, something like that. But now I'm starting to think that this is just too much for one man with a chainsaw to accomplish. And, and his, and his hard working son. You can see that the wind has brought down some of these big dead cottonwood snags. The beavers killed them all. They ringed them. So every, every big cottonwood in here has been killed, I think. But I have got to go, I mean, I thought I had to go another 100 feet. I got to go another 100 yards before I get to the road culvert. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down my hill. My well pump's right there. I'm going to come down my hill. I'm going to go through the road culvert and then back along here what, so that what oh what cotton would, would crashy crash crash well all the ones you can see on the ground so that i can water these trees in the summertime and then i'll just use a uh, archimedes um remember remember learning about the greedy cup right the cup where if you put too much uh, wine in it it spills all over your lap and makes you look like a fool that archimedes came up with well, I'm going to use the same principle. I have that well pump. I cannot develop pressure. I don't want to buy the pressure tank. The well, the well only runs for a few minutes uh, at a time. And then it, it starts to run out of water. Because there's a problem down in there. So I can, I can run it full bore like 10 minutes. And then she starts to drop off. So what I was going to do is set it up on a, a timer to run in, uh, I, have, I have a timer that let me run, let me run in, in 10 minute increments. And so every hour it'll run for 10 minutes into a 55 gallon drum. And then I'll set up the Archimedes greedy cup thing, which is just a siphon hose, right? Uh, in the side of the drum. And she'll just fill and fill and fill and fill. And when it hits, when it hits the level, it dumps. And then that all that would come gravity feeding down here and, and water my fruit trees. 
both on this side and on the other side. 50 gallons of water. I mean, I'd have to watch it to see. I don't want to overwater them, right? Um, I don't think I will. Not in this soil. I think it'll all be fine. But anyways, that's. I need something that's totally maintenance free that I can ignore for three months uh, while we're away and, and that's about the best I can come up with unless somebody else can come up with something better. No valving, no nothing. It's like a toilet, right? Actually that was my original idea. Just dump it into a toilet. But anyways, it'll, it'll fill up, it'll dump, it'll fill up, it'll dump. The pump won't run too long. It'll easily handle 10 minutes every, out of every hour. That sounds like a winner, but this this just might be too much. I mean, I can I can thread that that pipe through through that mess, but as far as clearing this all the way down to it, uh, we just might have to wait until the dozer is here, when the backhoe is back, or something like that. This is just this is just an awful lot of work, an awful lot of work. And if I if I clear that pocket right out in there then I'll have enough room for all the trees that I have coming I don't want to crowd this because I need to get in here to shove this with one of the pieces of equipment but that'll give me enough room for all the trees I got coming yeah because I'm gonna put three of them at least three of them up there and then the others will go down here but it is four o'clock I've worked my butt off. According to the Fitbit, I am at 24,000 steps. 23. Twenty-two, three. But I'll be at 24 before we're done here. So 24,000 steps. I got a big old stack of Hawthorne firewood over there, which is brutally hard. I got a chainsaw that has spit the chain again. Uh, I got a, a death mower, blade chunks missing. And so, as soon as he chops that down, we are gone. Yes. You got it! Why don't you let it fall the other way? Well, this way. There's so much pressure! I don't think you chopped it enough. Well, let it go. Shay, this is your project. You fight her to the end. Then let go of it and get out of its way. Yeah, I'll pull it down. We're working on persistence. Start it, you finish it. Just like we finished this. Thanks for watching.